When I think of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I think of the classic 1987 series that made a huge impact on the youth. I didn't really grow up with it because at the time when I was a kid, I was always watching Power Rangers or Sonic. I didn't get into the 1987 series of TMNT until years later after it was released on DVD. And to say the least, I was not disappointed. Lots of epic fight scenes, action, great jokes, all the above. And now, 25 years later, the Turtles, Master Splinter, April O'Neil, the Shredder, everyone is back, along with new characters as well, with more humor, more fighting, and more entertainment. Some of the new characters feature the likes of Chris Bradford, who is a very skilled martial artist and Shredder's top lieutenant, and Zephyr, who comes off as a merciless bandit that uses knives, and also with some skills in martial arts. And it's up to the Turtles to overcome the odds just like they did back in the day in order to stop the Shredder. So this episode is called Never Say Zever. And it starts off with Shredder talking to Bradford and Zever about their next mission. And apparently, Bradford didn't have much luck taking the Turtles on before. And as a result of that, Shredder puts Zever in charge, who Bradford seems to act like is inferior to him. And not liking the decision at first. But once Shredder showed him his weapon, he changed his mind pretty quickly. Then the theme song plays, and I gotta say, this is total nostalgia. April O'Neil is going for a walk, and we see that the Turtles are keeping a low profile by moving very quietly through the city as ninjas would. But as it turns out, April is taking the Turtles to this noodle place for a break in hopes that they could have a day off and won't have to do any fighting this time around. But right when they get there, trouble arrives as intruders are there in the noodle place. And as it turns out, the Turtles must fight once more against the Purple Dragons. A group of thieves who think they own the place. The turtles didn't come in and warned the thieves to stop their madness. And of course, the thieves disagree and go on the attack, only to get their butts kicked by the turtles. Leonardo had the chance to finish off one of the bandits that came at him with a blade and ended up owning him in the process. But in the end, he didn't finish him off, but he let him go. Yep, you guessed it. Leonardo showed him mercy, and Raphael didn't like it one bit saying that he should have finished a job on the thief for attacking the blind guy that was in charge of the noodle place. Man. The other turtles then discussed all the moves they pulled off, then told the chef their favorite dish of all time, pizza. <laughs> they then asked the chef some questions about the purple dragons, and from what Leonardo was told, these bandits are pretty darn relentless when it comes to stealing what isn't theirs. And here is where we see that Leonardo is starting to doubt himself for the decision he made since Raphael keeps calling him out on it. The turtles are then training, and Leonardo is upset. Then Raphael hounds him again, making fun of him since he showed the thieves mercy and didn't finish the job. And it turns out that the purple dragons only understand one language, fists and feet, supposedly. Then Master Splinter shows up with his words of wisdom, explaining that showing mercy is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of true strength. Which in this case, he's right. April O'Neil then goes undercover to search for the purple dragons, and we all know the turtles are waiting for the moment to move in. One of the purple dragons then leave the dojo, and the turtles follow him closely behind but quietly. And as it turns out, the purple dragons are working for Shredder's guys, Zever and Bradford. Then the turtles show up, Zever pulls out his two blades, and I think you know what's going to come next. Oh yeah. The purple dragons then get owned by the turtles again. Then Leonardo gets into a fight with Zever, while Donatello faced off with Bradford. And the two turtles ended up getting beat up pretty darn good. The other turtles, Michelangelo and Raphael, back them up, and just when you think they're going to gain the upper hand, they get nailed hard, and then the foot ninjas show up. Then the turtles end up retreating due to being outnumbered, and Zever calls the turtles cold-blooded cowards. Ha! <laughs> Are you serious right now? The turtles then have a conversation about the fight, discussing what they're going to do next, which Raphael suggests they should just finish them off completely and show no mercy whatsoever to Zever and Bradford because they're so ruthless. But Leonardo suggested fighting smart, and Master Splinter comes in explaining how Zephyr's tactics make him dangerous, but do not make him strong. Speaking of Zephyr, he then starts beating the hell out of one of the Purple Dragons for accidentally leading them to their hideout. No mercy there. This was so bad, it was great and funny, all at the same time. <laughs> he then had a talk with his partner Bradford, and Zephyr gets some information about where the Purple Dragons found the turtles at, which ends up leading them back to the noodle shop, and the chef, Marikomi, gets taken away by you-know-who. And they find a note that was left behind with a free knife. Which said that they have to go to some fortune cookie factory to save their friend. The rooftop, of course. Raphael then suggests heading over to the roof and busting in with a head-on attack to get the old man back. 
Then Leonardo tells him to think, which is not one of Raphael's greatest strengths, might I add. Because Leonardo knows it's a trap, and admits that Zephyr crossed the line when he took away Miracomi, and says, no more Mr. Nice Turtle. They then head on over to Bradford's location, discuss their strategy, and the moment Bradford leaves, the turtles take him down in like five seconds all together, tie him up, and chain him to a trash can all together at the same time. Now throw him in the ocean and get rid of Bradford forever. <laughs> but of course, it's all part of their strategy. And they end up carrying, dropping, then rolling the overweight Bradford to the location where Miracomi is being held by Zephyr, who ends up changing his plans at the last minute and calling forth a bunch of foot ninjas. Then the turtles put their plan into action, attempting to make a deal with Zephyr for him to let Miracomi go so they can let his partner Bradford go. Zephyr then says that Bradford isn't his friend. And I'm thinking, is this guy nuts? Or did the turtles get the wrong guy? Because this is not looking good. Zephyr then heads to the area where Miracomi was tied up. He pulls out a blade and starts cutting the damn rope. And Leo tells him again, they will toss Bradford off the roof in a heartbeat. And shockingly, Zephyr dared them to do it and just waits for it. And when the time came for Raphael to toss Bradford, he didn't do it. Finally, Raphael learned. The turtles then face off with the foot ninjas again, which ends up being a very entertaining brawl as they make short work of all of them. The more of them that came, the more of them that got owned by the turtles. One of the purple dragons tried ambushing Leo and failed, and once again, showed him mercy. Bradford then asked Zephyr how did he know the turtles were bluffing, and he admitted that he wasn't sure. I would not trust him anymore. Bradford and Zephyr then face off with the turtles alongside the foot ninjas, and this time around the turtles got owned. Jeez, looks like Bebop and Rocksteady live on in Zephyr and Bradford, because these guys are not kidding around. Now Zephyr was talking about finishing the job, and one of the purple dragons is on the roof, seeing that Leo is in a tight spot with the rest of the turtles, and after finding his sword, he gives it back to him. And after Zephyr said he's going to cut the turtles up in pieces, boom! Leonardo surprises them by cutting this huge tank filled with water, and washes away the foot ninjas and the other bad guys. And the turtles win again, and as a result, Miracomi gives them some more pizza rolls to enjoy. Not bad at all. The show then ends with Bradford and Zephyr apologizing to the Shredder for failing their tasks, and as a result, the Shredder tells them that he is going to deal with the Turtles himself. Damn, what's going to happen next? Who knows? But in closing, I have to say this. Nickelodeon has done a great job with this show so far. I know people probably think it sucks because it has so much CGI and such, but looking past that, in my opinion, this is just as good as the original team in T-Series is. You might disagree, but hey, it's just a difference of opinion. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.